Romans, and it was about Abraham whose belief in God was counted to him as righteousness. It was not his faith plus his obedience to God counted to him as righteousness, no. It was Abraham's faith alone that was counted to him as righteousness. Question. Does the Bible leave out obedience? You understand obedience to God, that God requires that? Does the Bible just leave that out? No. no. Of course, there's many verses in the Bible that emphasize that our obedience or our works, that's meaning the same thing, it emphasizes about this. In James 2, 14 through 26, it emphasizes that our good works show our faith. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. If faith without works is dead. But in Romans Chapter 3, verse 45, Paul, he is emphasizing that a person becomes righteous. How? Through their faith, apart from the works of the law. Apart from that, just faith. Well, James says faith without works together. And Paul says faith only apart from works of the law. It seems there's a contradiction, right? Really, both of them perfectly come together. It's true. Let me explain. There's three different views on this, on faith and works. And we're going to see which of these is the right interpretation, the biblical interpretation. Paul and James, they are explaining the same thing. There's no contradiction. First, let's pray. Father, I pray that you will help me to sign very clearly and the verses that I will use your word clearly, that faith alone is counted as righteousness, not faith plus obedience, no. Lord, I pray that uh, people have a desire to know how to be saved, and if they need to follow the law, add to their faith, it's confusing, and I Pray that I will give these three different perspectives and they will understand, understand clearly the verses that support the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. You see here, I have three things on the board, three different perspectives. And we're going to look at the first one first and discuss it. Faith equals salvation that leads to no works. What's that mean? Well, there are many people who believe that if they have faith in Jesus for salvation, well, it's finished. They don't have to obey Him. Uh, there's no requirements from God after that. They don't have any motivation to obey Him or to serve Him. Nothing. That's worldly sin. That's what that is. It means faith equals salvation. That leads to no works, no obedience to God. If there is no works, no obedience, that means that the faith is dead. It means that the faith is not real. It is not saving faith. Therefore, salvation here means nothing. James, in James chapter 2, he explains that faith without works is dead. Yes, Faith is dead. He's right. Now let's look at perspective number two. Faith plus works equals salvation. Many Catholics and Torah observants, uh, those are people who believe in following the Torah in order to be saved, the law. And there's other people who believe you have to be baptized to really have salvation. Believe in Jesus, yes, but it's a progression of salvation. These people believe in faith plus works. You see here? Okay, so faith plus works equals salvation. Is that true? No. The Bible teaches differently. Paul 
He says in many verses that faith without works equals salvation. Let's look. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. It's the same with other apostles. They say the same thing. Faith without works equals salvation. Let's look. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Another apostle, John, he's saying the same thing. Let's look. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. These apostles, James, Peter, and Paul, they are all believing the same thing, teaching the same thing. Faith alone equals salvation. So faith plus works equals salvation? No, it's not the gospel. Let's look at the third perspective. That is the gospel. Hey, did the apostles leave out obedience? No. Well, how does obedience fit together with belief? You notice number three, faith equals salvation that leads to works. Paul, he says that faith alone in Christ saves. Faith, that's it. James, he says faith with works. You see? They both match, it's clear. If faith equals salvation that leads to works. That's proof that faith is real. This kind of faith is not dead. James and Paul, they believe the same. Faith, this kind of faith, leads to works. Same. Now, what about the verse in James 2, 24? James says something different. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Let me explain. There's really no difference. James, he is talking about justification. Justification that is by works before men. Why? Because men cannot see faith in your heart. They can't. He's saying there must be some kind of proof of the faith. Works. Now, Paul he is talking about justification by faith before God. God sees us, and he knows the person's faith. God doesn't have to see works for proof. James, he explains that faith without works, no works, faith is dead. James means that from a man's perspective, to see a person's faith, they need to see their works, that their faith is not dead. It's clear. Paul, he's talking about what happens before God, and James is talking about what happens before men. It's clear. They both match what they think. Paul and James believe the same things. James quotes from Genesis 15, 6, And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. Now, James, where did he quote that verse? We'll look to James 2, 23. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. The apostle Paul, he took those same verses from Genesis 15, 6, and he quoted them in his letter to the Romans. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. So Paul's teaching and James' teaching is about faith that equals salvation, that leads to good works. That's the evidence that the faith is real. That kind of faith 
is not dead. And that's what they were both teaching about. Their teachings do not contradict each other. Now, it's really important that we understand that faith equals salvation, not based on good works, but it leads, the result is good works. Is this important? Oh yes, it's very important because people get confused on this. Suppose that a person trusts in Jesus for salvation, but they, they haven't yet had a chance to obey the law, obey God, or, or be baptized, and you know, they die that afternoon. Wow, I'd explain that. Well, the right kind of faith is what's important. The right kind of faith that's faith that will equal salvation. Faith in Christ Jesus, finished work on the cross that counts as righteousness imputed to us from Christ. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Both James and Paul, they're teaching no contradiction. Now, if you understand that faith counts as righteousness, you have no worries. You know, supposing if something's going to happen, you haven't obeyed the law, no worries. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. James and Paul's teaching fits together. Which one of these perspectives? Which one? The first one? No. No works equals no works. Faith is dead. The second one, number two, faith plus works equals salvation? No. Paul and Jane and John, they teach that faith alone equals salvation. Plus works? No. Both the Old Testament and the New Testament teach that the second perspective is wrong. That Old Testament and New Testament fit perfectly for the third perspective. Now it is evident. The second perspective? No. The first one, no, it's not right. The third one is the right interpretation, the right biblical interpretation. Now it, is now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the righteous shall live by faith. What does the scripture say in the Old Testament? Behold, his soul is puffed up, it is not upright within him, but the righteous shall live by faith. Just as David also speaks of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. And in the Old Testament, Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Faith equals salvation that leads to work is the right interpretation, the biblical interpretation that follows the apostles' teaching, including Paul. Jesus himself is the center of the gospel. He's the center of everything. Jesus is our righteousness. He is our life. He is our sanctification. In other words, he is holy. If Jesus comes into a person's life, they are changed. Their life is changed. That person that has Jesus inside them will want to obey him and serve him, thank him and love him. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So, the conclusion is, 
Faith in Christ alone is counted as righteousness, and works follow. Faith equals salvation that leads to works.